Again, welcome back to the channel. So today I have Angela with me. Most of you know Angela's my wife, but in 2017, she was not. Things happen quickly around this country. You know? <laughs> but in 2017, she was in real estate sales. And after that, really was struggling in real estate uh, business for a couple of years and watching our agents, my agents, the ones that I brought on to join us, join me in the industry, uh, make knocking down three, four, five thousand bucks a week. And she was waiting 90 days sometimes, Angela, I don't know if you remember those days or not, but uh, waiting 90 days just to get something through escrow. And then it would fall out of escrow. And all during that time, she was handholding the client uh, and made nothing. And worse than that, she'd be going all over to the state showing people houses, and then they'd buy from some other agent. So it was just a tough grind. It wasn't the million dollar listing show we saw on television, that's for sure. And so she decided to, to uh, jump ship get our license, come join me over over on the good side, the insurance uh, business, when specifically in mortgage station and final expense, uh, really just life insurance in general, got our license. And uh, then she started helping, you know, she started becoming a producer, but early on, she was really just helping me. She'd, uh, she'd prepare my packets because I was doing face-to-face -face back then. That was in California before COVID. And, uh, and I'd go out and run those appointments. And then I would come back and she'd enter those in the computer and get them uh, get them through underwriting, work with the carriers, work with a client, all that stuff. So little did, did we know she was learning a great skill. So as we started building an agency, she was helping our agents go through underwriting. She was helping them get prepared for their cases. She was helping them with product selection. So she had to know underwriting really, really well and almost on the fly because they're sitting in front of clients. The way we do things in our agency, everybody, is that we, you heard me talk about it before. It's called know before you go system. And you know, that changed a little bit because the virtual before we had we would book the appointment, we'd get some medical information, then she would do her research, figure out what products they qualify for, do me up a worksheet and send me out to my appointment with a worksheet and the paper applications and off off I went. And that's how we did it for several years. Well, when COVID came in, now we're doing things virtually. So we had to kind of do, do, do things a little bit more on a fly for me and for you know 25, 30, or 40 other writers as well who are sitting from the client. You got literally you know, a couple of minutes, yeah. right? To, in order to get, uh, to look at a, a, a sheet with some questions on it, find out what their answers were and send it back to the agent so that agent can run rates and present those to the client. So uh, through that process, she learned not only how to become a very, very good agent, which she already was, and she's been an elite producer now for several years, earning, you know, multiple six figures and above, uh, but also to help our agents achieve that same level. So I actually come on today to share a couple of things with you. And, uh, and we'll go through that. But specifically, I want her to talk about, you know, how she works leads, right? Is she buying final expense? Is she buying mortgage section? Or is she just buying uh, uh, just general life insurance leads? You know, what product she sells, what are her favorites? And how does she qualify a prospect for a product during a live virtual appointment or face-to-face? -face? So I think this is going to be some great information for you, uh, whether you're doing virtual or face-to-face. -face. This is who you want to exemplify and, and, and copy. There's an old book about, written by a friend of mine, Angela, you heard me talk about before. It's okay to be a copycat as long as you're copying the right cat. So Angela's the right cat. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Um, I always hear such great things from all your followers and and everybody always loves the channel. So I'm excited to be here. Uh, and I, we, I guess we'll just jump right in. Yeah. Tell us a about your background. I mean, I, I did share a little bit about it, but the kind of road to the industry. Uh, and what you've kind of experienced since since you've been here, and then we'll hit those other topics one by one. You know, um, Steve was right. I mean, I I you know I spent a lot of my adult years, you know, since I became an adult, um, I was I've been in various different types of sales. Um, I I you know I grew up in California, and we were just a middle class, average family. I you know my dad was a cop, my mom was a stay at home mom most of you know my growing up years, and. Um, we didn't have a lot of money. We weren't broke. We weren't, we weren't, you know, we weren't starving or hungry or, you know, worrying about the roof over our head, but we were like the majority of our clients and kind of this market, like this market that we serve that I came from that market. It's the market that doesn't have financial planners and, you know, we didn't have a CPA, you know, my dad had a, a buddy that did his taxes. That's what we had. You know, we didn't have a financial planner. We had, you know, some at, at work, they took money out of his paycheck for his retirement. That's, that was our financial plan. You know, likewise, we weren't too broke to survive. I mean, there were four of us, so I'm sure my parents felt like it, they were too broke to survive, but 
you know, we were in that kind of middle income America. And I think that when you are talking about things like leads and the, uh, what you're kind of focusing on, that's really the market you want to focus on is just that kind of middle America, average family size, average mortgage, you know, they're not living in a multi-million dollar home, but likewise, they're not always on the brink of foreclosure. And um, so that, I think that's a really important point to keep in mind um, because it will help you. It, it has helped me to kind of guide me through as I'm thinking about the question that you just asked, which was, you know, do you sell final expense? Do you focus on final expense? Do you buy, do you, is it mortgage protection? Yes. Like I do all of it. You know, I, um, you know, there's a reason that like the number one, you know, retailers in the country are, you know, Amazon, Walmart, and Target. Why? Because they sell like everything. They, they basically want you to come into the store and feel like the majority of your needs, including your Starbucks fix are met. And that is, I think that when you're focusing on your clients and when you're working with your clients, you want to be in that space where you can help somebody, you can help them achieve whatever their goal is if they're and what they qualify for so it's kind of a it's being able to kind of mirror um their uh you know what they're looking for what their goals are and what they qualify for you have to bring the two together seems right i was in real estate just to kind of back up a little bit i was in real estate and i was going broke i mean i couldn't afford to sell a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house and wait 60 days for it to finally run through escrow to make three or four thousand dollars or five thousand dollars it was just i was starving and it was depressing. I didn't, I, I really, I, I wasn't enjoying it because, you know, you were looking for these big, huge homes or mansions to sell because you needed, because you were like, ah, I got to make a good size commission. And what I really wanted day after day after day, what I kept telling myself was what I'm really looking for is something where I can have control of my life and my time that I technically had in real estate. But at the same time, I could just earn or start off earning like a decent consistent wage right i just wanted some decent consistent money but i didn't want to go and get a job i didn't want to go and work for somebody else and real estate wasn't getting it done when i started doing steve's packets for his appointments and started getting him prepped for his appointments and doing the risk assessments and doing the underwriting for his side i was like well i I mean, I could sell this, these people, the people that I was talking to on the phone, like they, they sounded just like we did, you know, they were, there was nothing special about them. They were nice people. They had just bought a home or done a refinance or whatever it was. And sure. We'd love to meet with you, you know, come on in on, you know, Tuesday at seven o'clock and I would have all of his stuff put together. So I began to, um, kind of, again, marry what they had maybe responded to on the lead sheet which was maybe a mortgage protection you know because that's what they had done they had either purchased a home or done a refinance so i was trying to marry that they had sent the letter in wanting mortgage protection and the fact that i needed to figure out what they qualified for and you have to kind of bring those two together so my advice my uh my last statement on this question is if you are in this business or contemplating this business and you are saying to yourself, well, gosh, should I go into the final expense business or market or should I stay in the mortgage protection market? You should do both and you should understand that it's a whole bunch of crossover because some people are not going to qualify for what you think. And we'll talk about this. I'm sure this is one of your questions, uh, which is mortgage protection and final expense because those aren't technical insurance terms. That's maybe that's so. Uh, I guess the question I had was, you're not, and I think most people would, would would have this question. Most people are buying final expense leads, or they're buying mortgage extension leads, or they're buying general life insurance leads. You're buying, if I understand it correctly, and I think I do, you're buying mortgage protection leads, things that people have filled out, mailed back in, direct mail, mortgage protection request leads. So they want information about protecting their mortgage. But then when you get them on the phone, you're not just selling the mortgage session. You're trying to qualify them in, in terms of what, because they may not be able to, go ahead. I don't want to answer your question for you, but what, what is Because the they may not, the finish to that sentence is because they may not qualify for what your perception of mortgage protection yeah. is. And here's, I, which leads back to the bigger point, sometimes the bigger problem in this industry, and that is mortgage protection, a lot of agents, a lot of agents, hear or say mortgage protection 
And then there's like a little equal sign, term insurance. Mortgage protection is not term insurance. Mortgage protection is a life insurance policy to help pay off or pay down someone's mortgage and give that family peace of mind so that when the primary mortgage holder passes or mortgage payer pay, passes away, that there's enough money there for that family to either pay off the mortgage, pay down the mortgage, maybe throw half at it and refinance the rest, or um, continue to make mortgage payments until they, they, they figure out what they're gonna do. Do they have to sell the house? Can they refinance the house? Can they requalify for the mortgage? Um, what, are, what are the options from the mortgage company? So when, when you, if you are the kind of person that says or hears mortgage protection and thinks term life insurance, that's not what it is. Just in the same way that final expense may not be simply um, whole life, you know, a small final expense whole life policy. It, those are concepts, they're not things. Yeah, so let's go back to that for a second because I think it's a good learning potential for most people because I know we deal with our agents a lot of times too. I get on the phone with you, I'm one of your clients, I mean, I'm a client of years ago, Angela, I want to cover the full mortgage, I'm not buying nothing. Where do you go from there? I mean, you know convince what? me that paying it down is just as good as paying it off. So a lot of times the first question that I ask somebody, and I always acknowledge, you know, I always acknowledge what they've said because you're not going, you know, a person, if someone says that to you and then your immediate reaction is just to slap them across the face and say, well, Steve, you're not gonna get that. So you better just get that right out of your mind. Okay, that's not like, that maybe back up to how to win friends and influence people, right? That's not gonna, it's not gonna get you anywhere. So typically one of my first questions is, Okay, Steve, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. So we want to try and cover that whole mortgage. So Steve, tell me if something happens to you, if you don't come home tomorrow, God forbid, who, who's going to, who's going to live in the house, take over things, handle things for you. Who, who's going to handle this, the house, the mortgage, that kind of stuff. Who, who's, who's going to be there. And typically uh, my daughter, your daughter. Okay. And do you think your daughter's going to want to live in the house or sell the house? No, she hates this place. Hates the house, so she's probably going to want to sell it. Come over for Christmas. <laughs> That's true. No, I'm just kidding. No. Um, so once we've established that, then it's more of getting Steve to understand that maybe we don't need to pay off the mortgage. If your daughter, so I always go back with, okay, Steve, so if your daughter is not going to live in the house, if we're not worried about keeping a roof over her head, right? It's not like she's a minor. Um, then what we really need, it would seem, is we need to be able to make sure that there's enough money there so that your daughter can pay on the mortgage, have enough time and enough money to get the house ready to sell and then sell it. Because, you know, I mean, I don't care how fabulous your house is or what, how great the price is, you know, it's very rare that, you know, you put, we're not really in that market anymore where you put a house on the market one day and it sells the next. So she needs some time so that the house doesn't, the bank doesn't take the house in foreclosure while she's trying to sell it and keep all that, keep the equity or the profit. So yeah, there's really we'll no advantage the house being paid off because they're not going to, no, if right. I pass away, they're not going to go to her and say, Hey, we want you to make the next, you know, you'll pay, pay that off. They're going to look for the next month's payment. And if it doesn't, if it's paid off and she's still going to sell it, it's still the same results when she sells it. Right, so he's carrying full coverage insurance on a mortgage or trying to, when all he really needs is to buy time for to sell the house and then get the proceeds from the sale of the house. Right. And a lot of times when we, now that we've got, now that we've kind of established that that would potentially be our mindset, the next thing that we, that we want to do is we want to find out what are Steve's options. Let's look at Steve, you know what we're going to do? We're going to look at as many options as we possibly can that make sense. So um you know let's go through let me get some information and while we're chatting here i'll go through and run some rates and if steve is like this steve in very very good health very physically active he has a good build meaning that you know his height and his weight are are not out of proportion um he's not too thin or too chubby uh then 
we know that we have we we have more options. We might have a term option that would allow him to cover a bigger chunk of the mortgage or all of it, um, and still fit his budget. But he might be like my client earlier today that she has you know she has COPD, she has, so breathing issues, she has heart issues, she has diabetes, she's obese. I'm not going to, and I think she's on a on a blood thinner. I'm not going to be able to find a carrier that's willing to take the risk and cover two hundred and seventy four thousand dollars for the next thirty years. It, it's not out there. And so if I um, say to you, I, I, they're gonna, my daughter will probably move in. What's the, what's the, how, how are you gonna handle that one? So if you are like the latter and not in great health and don't have a great build and we're and we're not going to be able to medically get you to qualify for two or three hundred thousand dollars worth, you know, uh, and the other thing to bear in mind with term is, as a side note, you know, even though a lot of times you're getting higher coverage, as people get older, they're not going to be able to carry that for very long. A lot of times they it, they may only get coverage yeah, for ten probably. years. So just because you can cover the mortgage for the next 10 years, if they live 20, you've still, you're still back in the same problem. So um, if it were a situation where we, we really needed to cover as much of the mortgage as possible, then my next conversation with Steve was because he, he says, okay, she's going to live in the house. She needs to live in the house. I have clients like that where they've got an adult child that they're very worried about leaving. You know, they're worried what's going to happen to their kid when they die. And um, so my next conversation is, okay, so let's take a look and see how many options and, and let's figure out where we can get you the, get the most coverage, right? The, the most amount of time for, so that we can fit your budget. So typically what I'll do is, depending on what they qualify for, health and age, um, go to that carrier find their final expense whole life policy and it's typically going to they're typically going to max out somewhere between 30,000 and about 50,000 um there is a new company out there that will go to 100,000 if they are in a certain age range you know there's knobs you have to turn with this stuff and um so at that point I would uh start running the rates for the most coverage that I could so if I felt like after looking at my underwriting guides, I felt like Steve could qualify for the most that say Mutual of Omaha would offer, which would be $50,000 in coverage, I'm going to run that rate first. I'm going to start there. And then I'm going to find out from Steve, um, you know, one, first, how, how, what, what that premium is, and is that going to even be remotely feasible for him? If the premium comes back and it's $300, and Steve says that his budget is thirty dollars a month. Then there's no. Then we don't need to go down that path much further. We need to find something closer to what fits his budget. Um, but my next point in that, which is something that we've done a lot of trainings on, is I'm going to figure out how many months of the mortgage we can cover for his daughter, so that she can continue to make those mortgage payments until she figures out a plan, because she's so going to have to figure out a plan. You're shifting the conversation away from, you know, a lump sum to, hey, look, I get you, I get the mortgage cover for your daughter for 72 months or 68 months, or whatever, because there's some value in that. It gives her almost five years or however long right. it is to right. get the house ready and get it for sale and cash it out and get the money, which would be the yeah. same thing, but different because he wouldn't be paying a large, he's going to be paying a larger amount of money for on premium to cover that, the, the whole mortgage right. rather than covering a, a period of time, let her sell it and gain the, gain the, the, uh, the payoff that way. Comes is the same thing, but it's less expensive on his part, plus he's aging. So, you know, we right. always talk about this, you know, buying as much as you can for as long as you can. That's, that's our terminology for, uh, for term insurance. But I think one thing that I want to stress is that everybody watched the video is, because you know, we get it all the time. Well, Angela, you know, they, 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 they are not, they, they insist on a million dollars of coverage. So it's great that they insist on it. But it's not what they want; it's what they can qualify for. And right. if, if you're dealing with, if you have the luxury, as our agents do, of having you know 15, 20 different carriers, you know that you, if you, if, if they can't get the coverage with you, they're not getting it with anybody else either. So you need to educate them on this is what I can I can qualify you. 
Yeah, the thing to bear in mind, I think, too, is sometimes as agents in our fervor to make to to get to to write the app and to you know help a family, and I only say that in quotations because sometimes we we get stars in our eyes, right? We we see those big commission dollars, and that's really the direction that we want to focus in on, even though. You know, we're always, uh, it is always to help the client, but I, don't make, don't make no mistake. I do this business so that I can help people and earn a living because yep. that's what I do. Um, I, 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 you may have to cut this part. Uh, I, um, th like, this is not a charity operation. I can't do this. I can't do this only out of the goodness of my heart. I have to do it so that it makes sense for, for me and my family as well. You know, there are carriers out there that have products that don't pay any commission because the, you know, based on tables and the way that the commission structures work and the risk on the product, you know, now they're pretty rare, but I don't sell them. I don't sell them because it just, even if it might be a fit for one particular client, I, I just can't. So yeah, uh, anyway, I don't, uh, there's a lot I, that I come out of this video. Question. The questions I already have, I've written, I read down a whole, a whole page of notes and I, and I work with you every day. So, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of things we can, we can go down that road on, on, on different things, but yeah. in the essence of, of getting these questions that we want to get answered on, on, on this particular video, keep it short enough to keep those attention. Tell me the, you know, when you're, when you're in that process, especially virtual, what four things do you need to know from that client in order to get them qualified on a product? So that's a great question because sometimes there are things that we leave out and then you have agents that get upset because they get the, they get their clients get declined. So the first question is always uh, that I always ask. Um, and the first two questions go hand in hand, but they have to be asked separately in my opinion, because otherwise people don't, uh, the first question is, what do you have in terms of a medical issue or a medical condition or a health issue? What do you have? You know, I have diabetes, I have neuropathy, I have high blood pressure, I have nothing, I have acid reflux. What do you have? The second question is, what do you take? And here's why that those two questions go together, but they are uh, actual separate questions. Because a lot of people um, will say, when I ask them, what do you have? They'll say, oh, I have nothing. I'm good, fit as a fiddle. And then I ask them, what do you take? And they start saying, well, I take two medications for high blood pressure. I take a cholesterol med. I take, take an acid reflux medication. I take something for my thyroid. And then you say, well, Oh, you said you didn't have any issues. They said, well, I don't have any health issues because I take these medications and now they're not health issues you anymore. You got Band-Aids all over the place. <laughs> right. You know? So it's always, it's always important to ask both questions. What do you have and what do you take? Because some people in their minds, they don't, they don't connect the two. The third question is, how long have you had it? So, and this is a really, really important question because most insurance carriers have different time frames for different scenarios. So some carriers will, if someone was diagnosed with diabetes after the age of 50, that's fine. If they were diagnosed before the age of 50, it's a decline. Other carriers, that age is 35. Other carriers don't care what age the diagnosis was. So it's always important to ask, how long have you had it? Is this something that you, it also helps you establish whether or not this could have been something that was a, a birth defect, uh, you know, something they've been born with, or something that developed later in life. So uh, important to know that. Also, when you're asking, when you ask the question, what do you take in terms of medication? Sometimes I will, I will kind of reverse that question. People are like, I don't remember the name of it, or you're going, you as the agent are going to start picking up some of these names. But um, if somebody can't remember a specific medication, I ask them, where do they take it for? Like, I don't know the name of the pill. Well, what do you take it for? Well, it's to keep my blood pressure down. Okay, so that's a blood pressure medication, right? The last question is, what's the status now? So some health issues get better, right? Some health issues, you have them, they go away. 
some health issues get worse. If somebody has congestive heart failure, it's not getting better. If somebody has high blood pressure, it could get better. It could get to the point where they don't no longer no longer need medications. Congestive heart failure is not getting better. Uh, cancer. Maybe they had cancer 10 years ago. Now they're cancer free. So what do you have? What do you take? How long have you had it? And what's the status now? And those four questions, along with their age and their height and weight, are typically enough for you to um, build, uh, you know, build options for your client. Perfect. I'll tell you what, a lot, that's some valuable information. Uh, what do you have? What do you take? How long have you had it? And what is the status now? Four yep. questions that will help you identify and qualify a product for, a, for any client, regardless of what they filled out the lead form. That's the message of the video right. is, look, be, be, you are a life insurance agent. You're not a mortgage station agent. You're not a final expense agent. You, have a, you hold a life insurance license, meaning you should be serving that client with what they can qualify for and what their interests and needs are, right? Interest is kind of a weak point because they might be interested in full coverage, but they can't qualify for it. So what Angela's doing, she buys the lead, she talks, talks to the client, figures out what they're looking for and what they can, and then what they can qualify for and presents them some options for them to consider. Use the A, B, and C options uh, you know, that, they can, that they can consider. And she's working, and it doesn't matter whether they fill out a final expense lead or a mortgage lead or a life insurance lead. She's landing them on a product that serves their needs that they can qualify for. Right. That's the point. Right? Did I say that right? And yeah, it gets powerful absolutely. Because we get a lot of agents say, oh, I want to sell final expense. You know, or I want to sell, I said, why do you want to sell final expense? Well, you know, I, I, whatever reason is. I go, I wouldn't pigeonhole yourself into one product. You're a life insurance agent. Buy some leads, call the client, and figure out what, right. their, what their problem is and solve it. Right. With your life license. Um, Angela, I appreciate you being on here. Um, we're we're going to have you back. Some great, valuable information that, these, uh, that I think everybody can use. So I appreciate you being here. Thanks. All right, guys. Hey, listen, don't forget, we got the 24 videos in the month of July. We got one video coming every day, Monday through Friday. We take the weekends off. Hey, listen, if you, if you liked what Angela had to say, leave her a comment. If she doesn't read them, I'll read them to her. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And uh, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can get the next video because we've got more great stuff coming. And God willing, we'll see you on the next video. See ya.